Okay. Um, so to move on to our next speaker um, for this session in the execution stream, um, the topic is democratizing data-driven decisions with self-service tools. Um, our speaker has joined us previously at API Day Singapore. Um, she's a senior data engineer at DBS Bank, and she's definitely a thought leader in the data space. Um, I'd like to welcome Yojas Samar. Hi, Yojas. Um, I can't actually hear you at the moment. I think you're muted. Really sorry for that. Uh, are you oh, good. The screen? And thanks for the introduction. Uh, yeah. The stage is yours. Yeah, I, I just want to check whether I'm able to uh, share my screen. Yeah. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Australia. And today I'm going to speak about uh, democratizing data-driven decisions with self-service tools. Um, I'm, uh, as Catherine mentioned as well, like I'm uh, SME for data visualization tools in the data platform and as a uh, tech trainer for various different tools in the platform as well. Uh, today, why are we talking about democratization? Uh, the reason uh, we are going uh, in a very fast pace, uh, technology changes and things are changing so often that we have to um, meet those changes and make uh, respective changes from the technology point of view as well. And um, to explain that, uh, I'm giving a, a small story uh, behind it. So in a traditional approach, usually whenever we uh, get into any project, our business send us the request for uh, whatever information you're looking for. They send uh, their requirements uh, to the BA or executives. Uh, they send this request to the IT department and IT department actually develops the solution and process it and share it with the executives and they again present and explain it to the business. This approach is quite fine and it works well uh, in a normal day-to-day uh, -day life like in project development cycles and even in various departments. So uh, why we want to change this? Uh, first of all, there are a few challenges that we face uh, while doing this. Uh, business requests are changing so often. Uh, also, the data that we are processing is changing quite often. So the workload on the IT department really increases while taking this requirement and developing something like that. Uh, it could be really time consuming as well. Uh, to avoid that, uh, we have uh, another uh, option. Like, uh, for example, uh, in Google, when you are looking for any kind of information, uh, as a layman person, you just type that information and you have it uh, at your uh, screen. Why it is so easy to access? Because, because of the layout and the technology running behind it, the algorithm that gives you what you are exactly looking for. Uh, to make it that easy for the business uh, to understand data and to get everything at their doorstep and not rely on uh, any uh, third party uh, people or even for the IT department. Uh, this is something uh, we have made uh, modifications and uh, when you are in the business side, you can actually access a big data platform and any tools in the platform. There are multiple tools in the platform and uh, you might uh, uh, you might find it difficult from the business side, like how am I going to understand or uh, what are things available in the platform and uh, how easy it could be for uh, any business person to understand these changes. Uh, as we know, data is a new fuel and uh, we all have uh, this necessity to understand and learn technology as much as possible, even from the business side. So I'm going to explain uh, in a uh, few steps. There are three takeaways from today's session, and those three points help you achieve this uh, uh, in a, from the big data platform. So uh, this is a business case uh, that I have uh, captured recently, and uh, uh, these are the actual numbers. So whenever any uh, operations teams, they're looking for a project. 
uh, they spend almost like two months of time uh, to work uh, on or deliver the project. Uh, you receive information, they process the things, and then there is a SIT, UAT, and production. Uh, once we move to the production, then we have a lot of other uh, challenges over there, like uh, unit testing, and then deliver deliver this to the uh, respective teams. Uh, this time frame can be reduced, uh, and it can be reduced to up to 45 to 50 percent uh, by having uh, a demo by democratizing data. So, uh, how exactly uh, this helped? Uh, I'm going to go in detail in a technical aspect as well uh, to explain uh, how you can reduce this time frame by having direct access to the platform. And uh, for that, uh, I, I want to share one uh, small analogy. Uh, for example, application and platform. I'm going to compare application with a restaurant and uh, platform with a cooking studio. So when you go to the restaurant, uh, what you get is a menu card. And uh, what you get is like you can select um, any kind of a dish from the menu card and you get it served. Uh, what, what, uh, how it is going to relate to the application is. In the application, first you select uh, which software, software you want to use. And after that, uh, once you select the software, you get your project delivered through that. Uh, what happened uh, in the cooking studio? You get, a, uh, you get the access for the backstage. Uh, you get all the ingredients uh, and you get uh, all the access to uh, different details in the uh, cooking studio. So here you can actually uh, mix and match different ingredients, create whatever you are looking for. And uh, to help you understand these ingredients, there are chefs uh, who are actually platform leads from the platform side uh, who help you understand how to uh, prepare your dish. So uh, in these two analogy, uh, one approach is where you have a limited option in the menu card and you get what you uh, want to eat. And here you have a whole, you go, uh, you go to the backstage with an open mind and uh, with innovation to create something uh, and meet your needs and develop something new. So uh, this is, this is uh, like, you have both the options, but of course, uh, today I'm going to explain more in detail for the platform, the platform side, and how we are going to innovate our dish. So uh, this framework, uh, this is uh, there. This this framework is for the uh, from the business side when we adopt to the data driven culture. So there are four A's that we follow: ask, acquire, analyze, act, and outcome. So. Uh, when you uh, when when a business send you any request, uh, first we ask the question. We define the problem statement. We see the feasibility. We acquire it. We design the solution. We understand it. We uh, analyze it. We process it further. Uh, we create our different uh, models. Then we act on it, like uh, from the monitoring perspective, from deployment and endpoint. What is the final outcome? Then the outcome, uh, we see whether it is really meeting the business needs or not. Um, by uh, after doing this, it is possible, like okay, it is not matching with the exact business requirement, and uh, we have lost some of the points, or the business requirement itself is changing. So in both the uh, scenarios, we will have to process it again, ask, acquire, analyze, and act. So this process will continue uh, for a longer period uh, throughout the projects that we are del delivering. So uh, what advantage we have? Uh, all these uh, projects, uh, all these solutions developed by different project teams, uh, it can be stored in the central repository. And uh, whenever you want to access any old projects or even some of the projects developed by different business units, which usually you don't have access in a normal development uh, uh, process, we have access for our own uh, team, our own IT department, but sometimes we are not aware about, hey, what's going on in the marketing side? Maybe they have uh, you know, developed something which is uh, similar to your, my own project. So you can actually access to the central repository and you can see uh, all different kinds of solutions developed by various different teams and you can even make use of any of the existing project uh, for your own purpose. So you save time over here as well. 
So uh, how exactly data flow in the data platform? So data is coming from various sources like file, uh, streaming data, files, different databases. We all ingest it in the central platform. And there we have uh, various layer like data storage, uh, compute layer. Then we have uh, analysts and uh, governance as well. Governance plays quite a vital role over here as well. So uh, when we uh, process this data, uh, the consumers of this data are, could be data receivers, data analysts, scientists, engineers. Uh, how they are going to access this platform is something similar like how Google does. Uh, not exactly the similar way, but we have a self-service portal, uh, which is like a website uh, where you can uh, see all the tools in the platform and you understand uh, whatever uh, business requests you type in, you get uh, suggestions like, okay, this is how you can actually process uh, data in the platform. Uh, of course, there is a team running behind to support this uh, platform, uh, center of excellence, uh, experts on respective tools, uh, plus education system, which tells uh, business users, uh, which uh, trains them to uh, make use of these and uh, they can actually get their final outcome from that. Uh, so uh, the key point here is to have center of excellence running behind to support this as well as uh, to have a right training material to help them um, guide whenever, whenever they face any challenge. Uh, in the platform, when we are having like uh, 50 to 80 tools, uh, microservices and APIs play quite a vital role from uh, passing data from one application to another application, as well as come, uh, when the data is coming in the platform, even when we are pushing it to the cloud or in a different bucket location, or uh, we are sending it to um, uh, AI side and even they are processing it from there. So throughout the process, uh, microservices plays quite vital role to achieve your um, outcome. So uh, tech innovation that propels uh, data democratization includes uh, three uh, building blocks, uh, tools and infrastructure that we pick for the platform, uh, governance strategies that we have uh, to see uh, where exactly data is coming in, uh, what is the lineage, what are the changes happening as uh, it's like an ocean and uh, we are receiving lots of queries in the central platform and then uh, data and insights. So uh, data visualization software, data federation software, cloud storage, self-service BI tool and e-learning workshop are the key important points uh, to implement this. Uh, what has changed uh, by data democratization? Uh, the very first change uh, that we have observed here is cultural change. Uh, the tool, uh, when we are uh, used to work on a particular tool, it also uh, needs a lot of efforts to change and really work on something self-service. So um, not many people are used to it, but this is a constant change and we have to adopt to that. So um, this is something, uh, in a, when we democratize data, we train users and we uh, give them uh, ideas on that. And this is how uh, the, uh, the cultural change helps to implement this. Uh, we also avoid silos here because of the central repository that we follow. Uh, we get access for everything. So there is no issues like, uh, hey, I don't know what exactly you are doing and can I get help from you? Uh, there is no dependency on other people. So you can actually leverage on top of that and get access to everything in the central platform. Uh, the self-service platform, uh, the UI that we have built, which enables and queries and provide them these details, uh, it really helps to uh, execute this overall. Uh, of course, nothing comes very easy, uh, even though we uh, find it very simple to implement this in three basic steps. But uh, it is not necessarily that you can achieve that in a very simplistic manner. Uh, the very first challenge that we can uh, face here is what if the business users who are getting full access for the big data platform, if they misinterpret or what if they really don't understand data well and they develop something which is not meeting business needs and it is not really delivering what uh, we are looking for. So those kind of challenges are there, but of course, uh, that's one of the reasons I emphasize more on the education system and uh, the support that we have uh, to scale up business side. 
and uh, uh, there are like different tools so uh, security comes uh, like a key concern uh, what is the security for my data i'm putting my uh, confidential as well as uh, non-confidential data in the central platform which is accessible for everybody so we need to have these enforcement points on every single tool uh, whenever data flowing from uh, one, app one application to another application as well as uh, uh, the tokenization is so important so uh, these two things uh, helps to uh, mitigate these challenges and resolve this uh, to uh, enhance more and more from the platform side uh, the key takeaway from today's session is like uh, culture change uh, to adopt to the self-service uh, environment and the education system which can help you enhance uh, these things. Uh, thank you very much uh, for, the, for listening to this and uh, in case you're looking for any uh, training materials or any information on the implementation methodologies or uh, other platform team, you can drop me an email or reach out to me on LinkedIn as well. Thank you. Thank you so much, Yojas, for sharing that. I found that very insightful. And um, I think it's a very interesting idea, like opening up data to your entire organization. Um, there are some questions that have come through in the chat. Um, the first one is, I think you talked about um, having uh, a data-driven um, culture. Um, uh, obviously, uh, that's not easy. Um, what are some of the real-time challenges um, that you've maybe faced implementing this? Uh, there, are, there are a lot of challenges uh, that we face in general, like uh, when uh, some of the users from the business side, when uh, they really work on some data and if something goes wrong, so how to identify that in the ocean, right? Like you really don't have uh, full details like why uh, other things are getting impacted. So uh, there is a SRE team, uh, which is like a, a site uh, resilience, like they really support, they really identify these uh, challenges. Uh, for example, uh, Presto is a tool and uh, Trino uh, gives us uh, governance for that, like which query is going wrong. If somebody uh, ran a bad query, uh, how to really uh, resolve those uh, problems and where exactly the problem is happening. So you can reach out to the right people and you can actually uh, help them out through that. Yeah. Um, another question that I have is obviously opening up data is great, um, but do you think that opening up this data, does that introduce um, noise for some of the other users in your organization? Uh, sometimes it does. We do have, uh, you know, received questions from various teams like we want to see uh, PII data and how uh, our data is safe in the platform and what are the things you have taken care of from the tech side in the platform. Uh, so, of course, uh, we have ISS team like which actually helps us to, uh, you know, whitelist what information we can keep and what we can approve, what we can't. Uh, it is so important in order to uh, really have uh, uh, data secure in the platform and uh, people should rely on us. So for that, we really uh, time to time check on these points and only approve those which is uh, valid for the business case and even for other teams as well. Um, I think that is all that I have for the questions. Um, I just want to thank you for joining us in AP, API Days Australia. I know you've spoken in Singapore before previously, so it's nice to see you back. Thank and you. <laughs> yeah, thanks for a very insightful talk.